Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 99. Day Day 3099 Day 3099 3 so signify that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 99 and we are on the topic of permutations versus combinations we are going to do a couple of problems today these problems that we are about to do they are not in the black uh, they, are, they are not in the book so don't look for them the topic of permutation versus combination is something that you will find on page number 301. So here we go. We are told that we have four books on friction. We have four books on fiction. We have three books we are told on the subject of science. We have two books on the subject of history. And we, are, we want to arrange these books. These books are to be arranged on a shelf in that order. In other words, we want to put all the fiction books together and then all the science books and then all the history books in that order. Question simply is, how many different ways can the books be arranged or placed on the shelf? Let's see what we can do. And if you want to do it yourself, you can pause the video and do it yourself and then compare your work against the work that we are about to do. So one more time, we can arrange them on a shelf. They have to be in that, that order. First of all, books on fiction, then science, then history. How many different ways can we arrange them? How, how many different ways can we, can we place them on the shelf? So let's begin with fiction. And we have four books. One, two, three, four. The question is, are we dealing with permutations or are we dealing with combinations? And the answer, of course, is it's a permutation problem because the order matters. If you have four books on the subject of fiction, whether we put the, let's, let's say the four, four, four titles of the books are F1, F2, F3, or if you like, if you like A, B, C, D, if you like. If you have four books on, on four different titles, the titles being A, B, C, D, that's one, or, that's one way of putting them on the shelf, or B, A, C, D. Order matters here. It matters in which order we put these four books. And therefore, and therefore because order matters, permutations is where order matters, we have four different ways of putting the first book, because there are four books there. We have three different ways. We can fill up the second spot. We have two different ways, two choices to fill up the third spot and finally the, the remaining one book, whatever it is, goes in the fourth spot. This is how many ways we can arrange the four books on the subject of fiction in the first, first area. Then the science. The rest, is the rest is the same. There are three different ways we can do that because there are three books here, three, two and one. Three different ways we can fill up the first spot, two different ways we can fill up the second spot, and the remaining book goes in thirds. And same idea, you get the idea. History, there are only two books, so there are two ways you can fill up the first part and the remaining book here. That, that's your answer. The sum of these three, uh, these three permutations is what we're looking for here. Four times three is 12, then there's 24. So there are 24 ways that we can arrange the four books on fiction in, in, in our, our order that we want. Four different uh, permutations are possible. Similarly, there are six different permutations are possible for the for the science book, let's line them up so we can add them properly. And then two, two ways, right here. So it's 24, 24, 6 and 2. Question is, do we add these figures or do we multiply these figures? That's where the, that's where the trick comes in. Do we, we, do we multiply these figures? Is it 4 times 24 times 4? 24 times 6 times 2, or is it 24 plus 6 plus 2? The answer is, for each of these 24 ways, for each of these 24 ways that we can arrange the books on fiction, there are six different ways, that there are six different, six different sets of books, but it's the same set, but there are six different arrangements of size that we can put with that, and two different arrangements on the books on history. So it's 24 times 6 times 12. It's 24 times 12. 24 times 12, 12 times 4 is 48, so 8 carry 4, and 12 times 2 is 24, 24 plus 4 is 28. 
Yes, yeah, there is. There are 220, 288 different ways that these books can be placed on the shelf. This, these nine books that we have, there is. Do you understand? Let's do the next one. It says how many different ways and these problems that we are about to do they're gonna be in parts so let's call this part number one. How many how many different ways can five prizes be given? to five people. Very simple, very straightforward problem. And of course, it's the five prizes here to five different, five different people. How many different ways? Five prizes. Five prizes being the first position, the second position, third position, so on and so forth, the fifth position. Clearly, order matters here. It matters who gets the first position and who gets the second position. If A in the first position and B in the second position is not the same as B in the first position and A in the second position. Order of course clearly matters. There are five of them. There are five different ways we can award the first, first prize. There are four different ways we can award the second prize. Three different ways we can award the third prize and so on and so forth. So on and so forth. Five times two is ten and four times three is twelve. Twelve times ten is one twenty. Let's look at number two. The second one that we look at, let's see what it says. It says, how many, how many ways can five people, how many ways can five people sit on five chairs? Now, even though these chairs are not marked as, as one and two and three, but they are in fact they are in fact marked because it matters. It, if there are five chairs sitting there, if there are five chairs there, and there's a, there's a table here, and there are five chairs there, it matters whether A sits in the first seat or whether A is sitting in the first seat, or and Bob Ellen is sitting in the first seat, or Bob is sitting in the second seat, or the other way around. This is this is not same as this, obviously. So even though they are not prizes, they are we're not calling them first position, second position, third position, so forth. But it does matter here, it does matter in what, in what order people are sitting. Do you understand? This is not a combination. A in first seat and B in the second seat is not the same as, you get the idea, B in the first seat, A in the second seat. Order matters. And therefore, this problem that we're looking at is the exact same problem as this one. The answer is 120. There is no difference. They are one and the same problem. Five different ways we can fill up the first chair, four different ways we can fill up the second chairs, and so on and so forth. Is it, they, are the, they are the same problems. Now what, what happens, what happens if you are given some certain conditions? For example, what happens, instead of simply saying that we have five people to be, uh, to be set on the five, five chairs, what if we have, there are certain conditions that we have to observe? For example, here are the conditions. We are told that A and B are not eligible, not eligible for the for the first prize. Or we are, or we are, we are told that a neither a, a nor b can sit in the seat number one. Seat number one, only the other three people are allowed to sit there because that seat of of course some has some significance. A, either a or b are not allowed to sit there. Do you understand? Maybe maybe it's a meeting, maybe it's a meeting of students and faculty, and the first seat, the head of the table there, has to be occupied by a professor. Uh, the three students and the two professors who are going to sit there, and then uh, two, 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 two students and three professors, let's just say, they are not allowed to sit in the first year, and they are not eligible for the first prize. So what can we do? Nothing. It's very simple. Same as before. Here is the first. First seat, second seat, third, fourth, and fifth. Since, since
since neither A nor B are eligible for the first prize, how many different ways can we give the first prize? Even though we have five people, which is a continuation of the other problem there, where we had five people who are, who are to be given five prizes, even though we still have five people, but neither A nor B can be awarded the first prize, which means the first prize has to go to either C, D or E. There are only three different possibilities that we can give out the first prize. After having awarded, after having given the first prize, as we go to the second prize, now we have four different possibilities because the remaining four people, any one of those remaining four people can have a second prize, any one of the remaining three people can have a third prize, and then this, and so on and so forth. There you go. It's not much difference here. So it's 12 times 6. 12 times 6. We know 12 fives are 60, so it's 72. How do we know that 12 fives are 60? Well, because uh, uh, or, or if you like 5 twelves, how do we know that 5 twelves are si 60? Because we know that 10 twelves, if you have 10 twelves, that's 120. And therefore, 5 twelves must be 60. 5 twelves are 60. If you have one more twelve, instead of 5 twelves, if you have 6 twelves, it will be 72. It will be 72. Let's move on. Let's have, they have, let's have two conditions now. Again, continuation of the same idea. 5 people to be seated in five seats, but we have two conditions now. I don't know why it says conditions before, because we only had one condition, the problem that we just finished. I, it's a mistake I made. Number four. A does not want to sit on either ends. And B insists. How do you spell insists? Insists on sitting in the middle. So here we have two. Here we have two conditions that we have to satisfy. Again, five people, five chairs. The scenario has, hasn't changed, but here. There are two conditions we have to satisfy. There is this person A who says, 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 I don't care where I sit as long as I am not sitting at the corner at the very end. I want to sit where I have people on, the, on either side of my, uh, of my side. I, left hand side and right hand side, I want people. I don't want to be sitting in the corner. And one person insists that I must sit in the middle. Pause the video. Do it yourself and see what you can do. Pause the video. I'll give you five seconds for you, for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself and then we'll compare your work against the work that we are about to do together. Well, in a situation like this, the key here, here's the solution. The key here, when you have more than one condition, or even just one condition, well, if it's just one condition, then what I'm about to say doesn't apply, because if it's just one condition, then of course that's the condition you're going to do, obviously. I wasn't thinking of being, I was being stupid. But if you have more than one conditions, then the key here, the key here is to always, always satisfy, always satisfy, the positive condition first. Positive condition first. Positive conditions are the conditions where they tell you that we must do this thing, this person must sit in the middle, that this has to be that, that's a positive condition. Negative conditions is where they tell you we cannot do something, it cannot happen, those are the negative conditions. Do the positive condition first, it makes it easier. So here are the five places, one, two, three, four, and five. We go systematically. The positive condition here is this one. B insists that he sits in the middle. Well, that's pretty much narrows it down. How many people can go in the middle? Just B. That's the only choice because he sits in, he wants to sit in the middle. There is only one way we can fill up the middle spot. It's done. Then we have four people left. We have four people left. A, B, C, D. A, or rather not B, 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 B is sitting here. C, D, and E. We are told also that 
A does not want to sit on the either end. A does not want to sit here. A does not want to sit here. A cannot go on this end. A cannot go in this end. Let's do it with a different color so we can we can make a distinction between the two different conditions. Or oh, we shouldn't have put the B here at all. That was silly of me to actually even write the B because B goes there. B is done. That's the first, that's the positive condition. B must go here. And A cannot go either on this end or that end. Which means, and B having been, a, having been seated here, only leaves with three different possibilities for the, for the first position. We can either place C, D or E in the first, first chair. There are three possibilities. Let's pick a person. Let's pretend it's C. So that we can keep our inventory. So B is already seated. C is already seated. Which means here we can have either A, B is already seated, C is already seated, D or E. There are only three ways we can fill up. We can fill up these two. Oh, I made a mistake here. Why? My no, either my notes are wrong or something is wrong here. A, is, A, A cannot sit here, and A cannot sit here. A does not want to be sitting on the either end. B, B has to sit in the middle, which means it's either C, D, or E, and we chose C, which means we can have either A here, D here, or E here. I think something is wrong in my notes here. I must have made a mistake in my notes. So there are three ways here. I hope I made a mistake in my notes. Because in my notes I only have A and E. I don't know why I don't have the D. D should have been here also. I must have made a mistake. Let me just check very quickly if I'm missing something. A does not want to sit on either ends. B insists on sitting in the middle. B is, B is sitting in the middle. A does, cannot sit in the either end, which means we have A, is, A cannot sit here. B is only there, which means C, D and E. Those are the three possibilities here. After having, after having placed him here, and one person is sitting here, one person is sitting here, one person is sitting here. There are five people, which means there are three places left, three people left here. This person is already there. Let's move on here. Who can sit here? Let's pick a person here. We, we had a C sitting here. Let's pick a D. So A, A can still go here. A has not been chosen. And E can still go here. Either A or E. Because B is sitting here, C is sitting in this corner, D we have put here, which means either A or E. There are two ways we can go here. Let's pick a person. Let's pick A. A is done, which means E can E is the only choice that is left here. And that's all there is. This is different than what I have in my notes. I'm hoping that I did not make a mistake, because when I was doing Myself, I came up with 12 ways because I had 3 times 2 times, I, I think something is wrong in my notes. Is it, in it is in fact 3 times 3 which is 9 times 2, 18 ways. 18 ways. And that's all there is. We'll do 3 more problems in the next video with the same idea. With the same idea of uh, people sitting in the 5 chairs. Uh, three, maybe two or three different pro problems in the next video and uh, get some more practice. Do you understand? I was going to continue a little bit more but I'm a little distracted right now. I'm going to stop right now because this is bothering me here. So I'm going to stop and check what went wrong and, uh, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.